Hey, what's up guys? Once again, we're sitting here talking about amplifiers. This is going to be a simple class A amplifier and we're using uh, 2N2222 BJT. Now when you use a bipolar junction transistor in an amplifier, it needs to be properly biased. And if you don't know what biasing means, it just means it needs to have the proper voltages and currents to work well. Uh, there's nothing too tricky about that. You can figure all this out using a combination of Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's laws. Um, I'm going to gloss over it really quickly. We're not going to get too tight into this. But we can say that the current at the emitter has to equal the current at the collector plus the current at the base. That's Kirchhoff's law. All the currents must sum up. Then we can also sum our voltages. We can say VBB is going to be equal to IB times RB plus VBE. We also know that there is going to be a, about a 0.6 voltage drop there. And if we rearrange things a little bit, we can say that IB equals VBB minus 0.6 divided by RB. And we can work it all out in the end and say that our VCE equals VCC minus the beta of RC times the product of VBB minus BE VE divided by RB. Like I said, we're not going to get into all that. That's just a simple glossing over of the math involved. Now, here is our amplifier circuit that we're going to look at today. And this is what we're talking about when we talk about biasing. We have a voltage divider here across our base that's going to limit and provide a constant voltage at the base. We have a current limiting resistor at the collector, one at the emitter, and one on our output to provide a small load. Now the values for all these can be found right here. R1 is 22K, R2 is 6.8K, and that provides our voltage divider. R3 is 4.7K, R4 is 1.8K, and R5, I forgot the period, is 1K. Now we also have three capacitors here. What's the purpose of the capacitors? Well, if this is an audio circuit, the capacitors are going to block DC and pass the AC. C1 and C2 are both 20 picofarad, and C3 is 50 picofarad. And why are they there? Again, they're there to protect any attached components. And what the purpose of C2 is, is it is going to allow a greater gain in our circuit. Because as our input goes more positive, IB, our base, and IE, our emitter, are going to increase. And this is going to increase the voltage across R4 and decrease our input signal. C2 going to ground simply prevents rapid changes in R4 and allows our input signal to remain as strong as possible. So that's the theory and concept behind it. Here is the circuit that we just talked about laid out on a breadboard and you can see it working there now all these wires and though this mess that you see here is just how we have it hooked up so we can view it on the oscilloscope let's do that now all right now you can see our input signal coming into the oscilloscope it's a 1.5 kilohertz signal so it's well within the audio range so it's 1.4814K, you can see right there. 
volts per division are 500 millivolts. Now, if we add in our output signal there, you can see it's also at 500 volts per division, so we're looking at everything linearly. At 500 millivolts per division, we're looking at probably 750 millivolts there. So that's a thousand, that's uh, about one and a quarter volts there. So you can definitely see we have the amplification and we do have some slight clipping along the bottom. Now, if I adjust the amplitude of our input signal, you can see we get clipping across both sides. And even as I decrease the amplitude as low as it can go, that bottom side clipping still remains. The magnitude or the amplitude of the amplification remains relatively stable throughout the audio frequency range. And that's a simple Class A amplifier. However, it is not a practical amplifier and the reason for that has to do with heat. Let's roll down and look at our circuit once more here. The beta of this 2N2222 transistor. Now let's bring in a uh, transistor tester here. I got this guy. I love this guy. Let's bring him in. And another 2N2222. Yes, I know they're not the same, so the gain's going to be different. But you'll get an idea of what we're talking about. So we'll put it in there. We'll hit the old test button. And you can see our gain is 287. Well, that's the gain at the current room temperature and the current temperature of that transistor. But the gain is going to change as the temperature changes. So we have no way to get a stable output on this transistor circuit, transistor amplifier circuit we just built. And that's why a simple class A transistor is really not practical for audio applications. But it is a good signal trans uh, amplifier. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.